I feel like I start all my videos out with, hey family, I know it's been a while, but the truth is, I don't know what direction my channel is going, so that's why I don't upload as frequently. But in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, I will try to upload more between September 15th and October 15th. The video is definitely posted after September 15th. So what I'm doing today is we got a collab coming up with a lot of my favorite Latinas, and it's something historical epic really cool really cool <laughs> i was looking up stuff on some information on my taino or heritage you know being puerto rican just learning my people a little more i reached out to some people my friend jeanette who does amazing woodwork i'll put her instagram handle and her facebook page and that stuff below in the description because she's amazing and she really helped me we had a good talk i love her fellow boricua she sent me a picture of her taino dress that she had made but also she had mentioned how you're supposed to use macaw feathers so that being said today you will see my process on how i go or how i hopefully execute this properly i will also attach pictures somewhere on the screen and credit whoever inspired me or whoever did it because we need to share more we need to get talking about this stuff more we need to explore this together more this is our culture for our people for our children for our future and our future and our future whatever our futures futures all, all of that so uh that being said i'm not any kind of professional uh, i'm learning <laughs> so take it easy on me so that being said i'm starting with this christmas ribbon because i already had it at home and i can paint it i didn't need to buy more ribbon so i'm gonna make this white and these kind of more brown paint to get like a straw type color and i'm just gonna paint this but actually before i paint this i am going to measure my head that way i have enough enough like space to work with and then once i've got my like desired length i'm gonna cut that and then that's what i'm gonna paint so stay tuned oh not only will you be seeing the whole process of my headdress you'll be seeing the whole process of my actual outfit and obviously i'm gonna tell you where i got things too 90 percent of the stuff is from amazon it's not authentic at least i don't think well actually the only only thing that would be authentic is these necklaces i don't even know if they're authentic but i got them on amazon they're really cute actually bear with me take it easy on me so now i just wanted to pop in and say i cut two strings and i'm gonna tape tape i'm gonna paint them both because if one is decent successful i might make my kid a headdress oh you can see my felina t-shirt so I have this Amazon box and I'm just going to, cause I don't feel like going to the table, put them on this box and I'm going to paint this stuff on the box. So these are them painted. Hopefully you don't see the snowflakes through that and it dries fine. I'm gonna come back when they're dry to show you them. So I realized that I didn't show you guys any of my um, stuff that I'm using to do this. So I thought I'd do that now while those strings dry. So I have glue sticks, glue gun. I got some red feathers, some more lighter blue, tealy, purple, purple, I don't know why I said that, tealy feathers. And these like purpley blue feathers. Again, traditionally, you're supposed to use macaw feathers. I don't have that, but I felt like I can put these together and it be something like that. And again, I showed you guys these. I thought these were really cute. I saw them on Amazon. I think they were like $8, $10 maybe for a two pack. I don't really remember exactly, but I don't know why they're stuck together right now either. Okay, so here they are separated. One of them, they both are the same. Super cute. And then here I have more glue sticks in this. I don't know if I'm gonna use this yet. It's like rope stuff. Oh, and I got these feathers too. I don't know what they are. I guess like a pheasant feather. You can't really see them. Let me open it so you can actually see them better. The other ones you could see better. This one you can't. I like that these look really earthy. So that's why I got them. And I also saw many different kinds of feathers in other people's. Like I didn't see the same uh, feathers, headdresses even once. So it's hard to like pick just one. Everything I saw were like really beautiful pieces that inspired me. Okay, so here are those feathers. They're still in plastic, but I got these for it too. And I think these earthy colors with those, I think they'll like even each other out and it'll be beautiful. And I have to check with Jeanette, but I'm pretty sure she said it's like, supposed to have like three red and then the blue ones go in between. Again, I'm not a professional. Don't come for me too hard. Also, I don't have any makeup on. Like why would you expect me to wear makeup like this? It's like nine o'clock in the morning. It's not that deep. This isn't a makeup video. So don't judge me for not having eyebrows. Next, I got these shells. 
Now let me tell you about these shells. Jeanette had put shell. Je I'm super inspired by Jeanette, clearly. Jeanette um, had put shells on hers, I believe. I believe it was, I think she'd put shells on hers. But the shells that I thought I ordered were bigger shells, but look how little they are. And that's gonna go like on the band. So I'm gonna glue the hot, I have a, my hot glue gun, I'm going to glue the feathers on the um, rope. I was about to call it a rope. On the ribbon. I'm going to hot glue the feathers to the ribbon so I can wrap it around and tie it. And then on top of the feathers on the bottom on the band on the ribbon, I'm going to glue these little guys. And then for my outfits, this is also another controversial topic. There's so many different Tainos that have different opinions on what they wore. To my knowledge prior to this, I thought we were just nudist, like the women were topless and it was just like a little white loincloth. Again, still doing my research, don't come for me. So obviously I'm not gonna be here topless. Jeanette used a really pretty white dress that she found. I looked on Amazon and I found this two piece. It's like this kind of top, it's like a little, um, it's not a bra. It's almost like, a, it's like a bodycon two piece. Instead of like a bodycon dress, I got a two piece. That's the top and then the skirt is longer. Jeanette told me that married women wore longer skirts and the unmarried women wore shorter skirts. I had also reached out to other people on Instagram for information, but I haven't got response back. Again, I know this is short, nor short notice and these are busy people, so I mean, it's fine. So maybe I'll just call this Taino inspired so people don't come for me too hard. But yeah, two piece little outfit on Amazon. I think it was like $17. I think overall I spent about $100 on all my pieces to put the outfit together with like, this whole process is really cool learning things. I'm still learning things. Again, don't cover me as I'm learning things. Please don't cover me. But I'll come back when my ribbons are dry to make the headrest, head wrap. I'll come back when my ribbons are dry to make my headpiece so we can make my headpiece together. In the meantime, while that dries, I'll be doing more research because I want this to look really nice. So I feel like too often Taino culture can be underrepresented um, and I feel like it's not as talked about as it should be. Like a lot of people think Tainos were just in Puerto Rico. No. Um, or just in, you know, Latin Caribbean uh, countries. No. Not true. The Tainos were in Jamaica, Haiti. When I see a lot of people make videos, you know, representing their Puerto Rican culture. I'm gonna stick to Puerto Rican because I don't know all the islands. I'm not a professional here. When I see a lot of people represent Puerto Rican culture, you see the, you know, lots of bomba, you know, the plena dresses. That's beautiful, but I feel like we, we know that part more than the Taino. And I feel like the Taino part is underrepresented. And maybe this is why, because there's not a lot of information or there's lots of misinformation or there's a million people who are professionals and saying that they're professionals and they all have different viewpoints on it. So it's tough, you know, I feel like we gotta come together as one people and, you know, put our heads together to make this great and known and share what we have and what we find with our people. How can we properly appreciate our culture if we are not learning about it consistently? If we are not actively seeking to know more? Also, how can we actively, you know, search and learn more if we're not given the tools? There's a lot of people who, who know many things and that's a beautiful thing, but if we don't share those, those things that we know with people, you know, just something simple like this, like where to find somebody who make uh, Taino headdresses or, you know, traditional clothing and stuff. We have to share whatever we can. So our, our people aren't underrepresented. So people know more. We can't be upset when people don't know anything if we're not sharing. Um, and I also read somewhere about somebody was saying how like Taino culture and secret, how Taino culture is um, sacred and secret. So I don't know um, like that aspect. Again, I'm, I'm gonna say this a hundred times. I'm still learning. I'm not a professional, but I feel like how can we keep our culture alive in the memory of our people alive if we are not discussing these things and sharing what we know and what we find that's why i wanted to make this uh very amateur video you know to share my little bit my little piece my little something so yeah that's it i hope you like this video and if you uh copy anything that i do recreate anything i do or inspired by anything i do um let me know tag me in your posts on instagram uh yeah Thank you. <laughs>